Conquering Controlling Powers by David O. Oyedepo. Introduction For the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Romans 7 verse 19, 22 to 23. The last days operations of iniquity is on the frequency of mysteries it's not like before no the wicked shall do more wickedly forces have been let loose from hell to hold bound the sons of god but i have good news for you we are going to destroy those forces satan is going to suffer utter defeat there are many things you never intended to do but somehow there are forces controlling forces in the air that want to take advantage of your ignorance of the real battle ephesians 6 verse 12 tells us for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places our battles are essentially spiritual it will therefore require a spiritual approach to have our desired victory there's a spiritual dimension to those habits those controls those depressive moods they are organized by hell just to disconnect you from source and i believe the moment a man has made up his mind and can see certain things constantly working against him he should be able to say to himself there's a force at work here and then to launch an attack against it in order to secure his victory vows determination willpower are able to handle habits but spiritual influences can only be handled from the spiritual sphere there are habits and there are controls habits can be handled by the will vow or choice but spiritual controls require much more than that for the good that i would i do not O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Romans 7 verse 19, 24. Those are spiritual controls in the heavenlies. They are called spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. For instance, there are many men who have vowed, I will never beat my wife again they have knelt down to pray and asked god for forgiveness they have called themselves names but all to no avail controls that's what it is we have been able to adequately handle habits it's time to confront spiritual controls controls in the air the prince of the powers of the air the one that is working in the children of disobedience where we were before jesus by his blood brought us out into the kingdom of light but that wicked spirit is still looking for us there are habits and there are controls controls are remote in nature they are in the air but your hour of deliverance has come that wild anger that depression you can't stress the source you'll be jumping and praising the lord this minute and the next minute you're like a deputy devil they are all demonic controls or something just comes upon you and you're roaring at your children like a lion and they're all shaking and some people will look at their own children and curse them they are children it's not that they want to do it but there is a control from somewhere the same man just prayed for his children in the morning and now in the afternoon he's raining curses on them no it's not him but a control from hell this is your hour of freedom it is good to know that you are a most fruitful vine if you are a child of god born again you are god's choicest vine isaiah 5 verse 1 you have such a 
fantastic future but the devil is eyeing it he wants to steal it you know john 10 verse 10 tells us the thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy but you know something satan can be destroyed you remember in mark 1 verse 24 the demons cried out art thou come to destroy us our generation will keep satan on his knees we are going to make life so unbearable for satan when jesus sent the disciples out in matthew chapter 10 he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out if you have been suffering some defeat in the hands of these controlling spirits that defeat will be turned to victory as you lay hold on the truths that i will be sharing with you in this book controlling spirits are real we're going to expose them and deal with them accordingly job suffered under the affliction of satan for so long because he didn't know the source of his troubles he thought it was god that was afflicting him he said to his wife what shall we receive good at the hand of god and shall we not receive evil job 2 verse 10 so he was directing all his prayers to god there was no resistance of any kind from him so he suffered you know something about sin it buys opportunities and make no provision for the flesh romans 13 verse 14 when a provision is made satan dives in but you can break that control friend if you have been suffering some defeat this is your hour of liberty you will not miss it in jesus precious name chapter 1 the law of sin and death for the law of the spirit of life in Christ, Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Romans 8 verse 2. There's a law of sin, a force that remotely controls, subjects, and brings into captivity innocent sons of God. Paul confessed, For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing, for to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. But the the evil which I would not that I do. I find then a law that when I will do good, evil is present with me. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Romans 7 verse 18 to 19, 21 to 23. A law is of force for the earnest expectation of the creature waitest for the manifestation of the sons of god for the creature was made subject to vanity not willingly but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope romans 8 verse 19 to 20 it says not willingly somebody has vowed to love his wife forever this was on sunday and then monday comes and passes tuesday comes wednesday and then on thursday he says that thing you did on monday it's because of the vow i made on sunday otherwise you know what is happening the force is coming heavily upon him and then on saturday he says to his wife it's important for me to let you know that you have to be careful now the force is coming stronger it wants to get him friends there's a law of sin it's a force it's a control somebody got drunk with alcohol yesterday and in his stupor slept in the gutter he woke up the following morning and found himself in the gutter should he go to his drinking joint again today no but on his way back from work 
instead of going home he goes again on his drinking spree that's a man under the law of sin he can't help himself you know if you're a very angry person you don't need anyone to say anything to you to make you angry you just get angry over anything whether good or bad because of the bondage of the law of sin and death it's there in you warring who shall deliver me from the body of this death paul lamented that gives you an understanding that we must have our own security in this spiritual conflict but thank god for though we walk in the flesh we do not war after the flesh for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through god to the pulling down of strongholds second corinthians 10 verse 3 to 4 there's a way out chapter 2 controlling spirits for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places ephesians 6 verse 12 there are forces called rulers of the darkness of this world they are behind all the works of darkness they are spirits they are forces in the spiritual realm that are out to devastate the destinies of men and there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit and he cried out mark 1 verse 23 there is what is called unclean spirits every man that is reacting against Against the word of righteousness is under the bondage of unclean spirits. What is the mission of unclean spirits? To make men walk in all manner of uncleanliness. There are many scriptures that establish the reality of these controlling spirits. Let's look at them one after the other. Spirits of the world. Now we have received not the spirits of the world, but the spirit which is of god that we might show the things that are freely given to us of god first corinthians 2 verse 12 so there is a spirit of the world what does that spirit command first john 2 verse 15 to 17 tells us love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him for all that is in the world the loss of the flesh and the loss of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world and the world passeth away and the loss thereof for he that doeth the will of god abideth forever we see here that the spirit of the world commands the activities of the lust of the flesh it monitors supervises coordinates and organizes the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life let's look at peter's case then peter took him and began to rebuke him saying be it far from thee lord this shall not be unto thee matthew 16 verse 22 jesus was talking about the death he would die and peter influenced by one of these negative spirits began to rebuke jesus friends the rulers of this wicked world and the wicked spirits in high places are the forces we are contending with these forces influence people to do things against god so that they can fall under his judgment see peter who had just proclaimed jesus as the christ by revelation neither flesh nor blood has revealed this to you jesus told him the devil then decided to also reveal something to him so peter took jesus and began to rebuke him he was under a strange influence strange influence from the pit of hell anything that makes for spiritual arrogance and rebellion is the work of the spirit of the world jesus saw beyond the man peter and he turned and said get thee behind me satan thou art an offense unto 
me. For thou savourest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Matthew 16 verse 23. When the things of God don't matter to you, you are under the influence of one of the rulers of this wicked world. I see Peter's rebuke of Jesus as blasphemous, seditious, and rebellious. What happened? Peter simply went wild under a satanic influence. Every time you see your spirit not embracing the truth of life, know that there is a strange influence trying to tear down your destiny. So be smart enough to say, like Jesus, get the behind me, Satan. Judas was also a victim. Then entered Satan into Judas, son named Iscarius, being of the number of the twelve. Luke 22 verse 3. Every rebellion is perpetrated by demonic influences. Rebellion is a demonic activity perpetrated by evil influences. Satan entered Judas and he went his way to betray the master. These are not natural forces. They are essentially spiritual, demonic, satanic forces aiming at men's destinies to destroy them. You will not be destroyed in Jesus name. The spirit of the world has destroyed many families. The woman wants everything money can buy until she wears the man out. That is the loss of the eyes. For a man or woman to be wearing clothes on credit he or she is under the captivity of the spirit of the world. The loss of the flesh and the loss of the eyes. To look at a wristwatch that is worth thousands of dollars and go for it while other pressing issues are left unattended to a sickening friend. These things work so subtly you don't hear the footsteps of a serpent do you? Now tell me what is a man doing with two cars when he's only just starting a business. Meanwhile, he's all over the place looking for capital. He is committing a capital sin. Remote control. It controls from the realm of the unseen. The spirit of the world puts people in bondage by the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Some people are looking for what business to do. Meanwhile, the jewelries they have on adds up to more than the capital they need. When this ministry started, I had just three coats and two trousers. I just kept combining them. I didn't have any problem. Yet, I was president general of the ministry. Who is looking at you? The worth of a man is not in his dress. It's in his address. Your worth is in your value to men, not in the things you put on your body. For instance, if a harlot wears all manner of expensive apparel, does that now make her an honorable woman that title harlot has already destroyed the glamour of the clothes have you ever seen a beautiful beggar before the fact that he is a beggar has eroded whatever beauty he has the spirit of the world is what is tormenting your mind that won't let you be contented or be grateful to god it keeps your mind panting after things haven't you heard that godliness with contentment is great gain. 1 Timothy 6 verse 6. Friend, you don't have a problem, so you don't create one for yourself. Whatever makes you tired of the truth is the devil. Look at Ephesians 2 verse 1 to 3. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts 
of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature the children of wrath even as others it says the prince of the power of the air so wherever air is that's where he operates the prince of the power of the air is what moves a man into the lust of the flesh and all that follows it now look into the atmosphere and say christ has given me power against unclean spirits prince of the air hear my voice i am not subject to your authority your influence will no longer find access to my life nor my flesh nor my mind no no more when you look at what is in the world the lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh and the pride of life they are all machinations of the spirits of the world and when you are captured by it you become an enemy of god know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with god whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of god james 4 verse 4 no enemy of god has a future remember pharaoh nebuchadnezzar herod and others it is the love of god that guarantees glorious living there is also a lying spirit and the lord said unto him wherewith and he said i will go forth and i'll be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets and he said thou shalt persuade him and prevail also go forth and do so first kings 22 verse 22 so there is a lying spirit you may even look so anointed under its influence lying is one of those demonic influences over the lives of people to make them come under god's wrath look at this brother's testimony i used to indulge in everything you can think of as a young boy indulging in except smoking and since i got born again last year i started trying to stop all these things i used to go out with a lot of girls and also indulged in lying i took lying as impossible to stop i thought one couldn't stop lying even after being born again but at the january signs and wonders week the bishop said if you take holiness to be unachievable you will die in sin then i prayed to god that i wanted to stop lying before i was a master fabricator of lies whenever my friends were in trouble they would come to me and say dare this is what we want this is how it is after telling me everything i will help them fabricate a lie that will settle the matter after hearing the bishop however i told god i wanted to stop lying and glory be to god yesterday i was just thinking and i cast my mind back trying to remember when last i lied one of the pastors said the devil is like shit to us that he has no value that's how lying and every form of sin is to me now i give god the glory he was under the influence of a lying spirit listen to me those who won't go to heaven know from here since it is written that all liars won't go there revelations 21 verse 8 and you know you are a liar when rapture comes you should do not expect to be raptured this is the implication spirit of bondage for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry abba father romans 8 verse 15 there is a spirit of bondage it gets people tied down locked up and chained down this spirit is responsible for all all manner of afflictions that people suffer talking about the woman that was under affliction for 18 years in luke 13 verse 16 jesus asked and ought not this woman being a daughter of abraham whom satan has bound be loosed from this bond 
that's the spirit of bondage it is a spirit of captivity you just get captured by it for instance somebody is coughing and is still smoking yet he has been told at the hospital that he has tuberculosis he doesn't want to die yet he keeps smoking and he's coughing he is under the arrest of the spirit of bondage the spirit that causes addiction to evil when jesus was here on earth ministering he was healing many who were oppressed of the devil healing all that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him acts 10 verse 38 everything binding you to what you don't want is a spirit of bondage for the creature was made subject to vanity not willingly but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope romans 8 verse 20 not willingly it's a force a control by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of god verse 21 there is a bondage of corruption it is worked out by the spirits of bondage it gets people addicted to evil without any feelings every bondage is by the oppression of the spirit of bondage so it is not what you want it is what it wants it's a control but it can be destroyed spirit of whoredom they will not frame their doings to turn unto their god for the spirit of whoredom is in the midst of them and they have not known the lord hosea 5 verse 4 there is a spirit of whoredom it constantly craves filthiness sexual immorality making motions in the body etc you have cried secretly you have fasted and prayed yet you can't break from it it's a spirit the spirit spirit of whoredom that's the spirit of adultery and fornication that crave for adultery in you is a spirit it's a control it's an unclean spirit you have power over it jesus gave us power against unclean spirits to cast them out matthew 10 verse 1 spirit of disobedience and you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins wherein in In time past you walked according to the curse of this world according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience Ephesians 2 verse 1 to 2 there's a spirit of disobedience the ministry of that spirit is fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind that's where it works its domain this spirit works disobedience in people going through the flesh and the mind to take people of god's presence so that they can be afflicted and tormented it works through the flesh and the mind to make you a child of wrath to bring the wrath of god upon your life but the hour of your liberty has come it's over now the answer is here chapter 3 break that control for thus saith the lord to the men of judah and jerusalem break up your fallow ground and sow not among sons jeremiah 4 verse 3 i believe your fallow ground is the hardened area of your life that you have not been able to find an answer to now god has shown you that it's some forces in the air that have been responsible for those negative habits and lifestyle break that connotes a force so god must have made available to us provisions required to enable us break those things and seek the lord break up your fallow grounds 
I mean the unplowed grounds of your life, the hardened habits that control your life. Don't say it's my nature. It's not your nature. It's the devil's nature. Break it. Don't say it's my nature. Break it. Responsibility is the price for greatness. Nothing emerges on its own. Every emergence is forced to come forth. Break up your fallow grounds. The violent take at it by force. Matthew 11 verse 12. Every influence inside you that is trying to move you against the will of God. Break it in the name of Jesus. It's a fight. It's a battle. Get ready for it. By destiny, you are an overcomer. For whatsoever is born of God, overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. 1 John 5 verse 4 So no way for the devil. Cast off. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Romans 13 verse 12 Cast off. That is the same word that is implied in Mark 16 verse 17. And these signs shall follow them who believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. Many are heavily oppressed. By that oppression, they are under influences that are, as it were, stronger than their ordinary will. Cast off connotes of force. Jesus said, in my name, they shall cast out devils. Cast off implies that you can get yourself out of it. You say to that spirit of adultery or that spirit of lying, lose your grip of me in the name of Jesus and off it goes. They are not natural forces. That's why the Bible says cast off. They are essentially spiritual, demonic, satanic forces. Listen to me. After you have made your choice and have entered into a covenant with God with an oath never to be found in that thing again and the motions of that sin is still trying to move in your body, cast it out. It's a stranger in a hiding place waiting to devour and destroy your destiny cast it off he said cast off the works of darkness and in mark 6 verse 7 we are told and he called unto him the twelve and began to send them forth by two and two and gave them power over unclean spirits and in Luke 10 verse 17, they returned with the report that even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Jesus said, I have power over unclean spirits to cast them out. I want you to know that you have power given you by Jesus to cast out unclean spirits. You can cast out all manner of unclean spirits. This is the last straw that that will destroy the devil's hold on anyone's life. It always works. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. He cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. Mark 1 verse 23 to 26 command it to enter no more. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he said, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when it is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he, and taketh with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there and the last state of that man is worse than the first even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation matthew 12 verse 43 to 45 ho 
very innocent Christian. The spirit was oppressing him before and he cast it out. Now the spirit reinforces seven more wicked spirits and come back seeking to possess him again. The atmosphere is charged. The unclean spirit is roaming about looking for where to land. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life all looking for who to capture but you can deal with it. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him, and enter no more into him. Mark 9 verse 25 Listen, friends, when you cast out the evil spirit, command it to enter no more forever and secure the place with the blood of Jesus. Put off. But now ye also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Colossians 3 verse 8. Just the same way you put off your clothes, you can put off unrighteousness. I'd like you to see the weakness of these spirits. Because when a strong man armed keeps his goods, his goods are in safety. It now takes a stronger man to come upon him and overcome him. The moment you see Satan as stronger than you, you will remain a captive. The Bible says, put off, not struggle to put off. Put off all these so you can put off anger, malice, wrath, blasphemy, filthy communications out of your mouth, etc. It also says lie not one to another. That means you can put off lying too. Verse 9 of Colossians 3 says put off the old man with his deeds. When I get home at the end of the day's work, I always tell my children to take off my shoes for me. I don't have to start praying that the shoes should obey me when I want to put them off. No, I just go ahead and take them off. That means the works of the flesh are as lifeless as the clothes or shoes you put on so you can put them off at will. I want you to have a superiority complex against controlling spirits to be able to see them as things you can handle. Put on. In that same Colossians 3 verse 10 it says, And have put on the new man. Can you see now? It's just like changing clothes. You put off this and you put on that. You put off the old man with its deeds and put on the new man. Verse 12. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and and beloved bowels of mercies kindness humbleness of mind meekness long suffering and then in verse 14 it says and above all these things put on charity which is the bond of perfectness so you can put off anything you don't want and you can put on that which you want this is the only reason god will judge anybody because sin has no power over us since we are involved he sees what we are doing as our choice that's why we are punished for it is that in your choice if you say no then put it off you need a sense of superiority so as to enhance your exercise of authority look at the testimony of jesus in mark 1 verse 27 and they were all amazed for with authority commanded he even the unclean spirits and they do obey him why i am saying all these is this in these last days there shall be certain strange visitations of favor, but only the doers and the followers of righteousness will enjoy it all. I don't want you to miss out on that. Sin is a thing to put off at will. You can will it where you are right now, and that motion in your flesh will die. Then the one you desire 
can be put on, lay aside. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Hebrews 12 verse 1. You can lay aside that spirit of bondage, that spirit of whoredom, that lying spirit, etc. You have a choice. You have the power to lay it aside or God wouldn't ask you to do so. You can handle it. You can deal with it. The Bible says, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the loss thereof. Romans 13 verse 14. That means it's only your provision that grants its entrance. But as far as God is concerned, it has no power over you. Mortify. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things say the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Colossians 3 verse 5 to 6. To mortify means to destroy. You can destroy fornication. You can destroy lasciviousness. You can destroy envy and all the likes of it. They that are in the flesh cannot please God. But through the Spirit we can mortify the deeds of the flesh so we can live. For if ye live after the flesh ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify mortify the deeds of the body ye shall live romans 8 verse 13 i'd like you to be violent there's no gentleman at the war front it's a survival of the fittest the other side has no mercy no the word is seek him first and get him down wherewither shall a young man cleanse his ways by taking heed thereto according to thy word psalm 1 1 9 verse 9 that is you can use what god is saying to mortify the deeds of the flesh purge yourself if a man therefore purge himself from these he shall be a vessel unto honor sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work second timothy 2 verse 21 and first john 3 verse 3 says and every man that hath this hope in him purified himself even as he is pure who does the purifying you little children keep yourself from idols first john 5 verse 21 who keeps himself you you have to accept that responsibility verse 18 also says we know that whosoever is born of god sinneth not for he that is begotten of god keepeth himself and that wicked one tortured him not. Who keeps himself? You. Accepting personal responsibility is what establishes a man's dignity. Stop looking out for who to blame. Exercise yourself. Paul, writing to Timothy in 1 Timothy 4 verse 7 said, But refuse profane and old wives' fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. The same Paul makes it clear in Acts 24 verse 16 that, And herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense toward God and toward men. No one excels in anything without exercise. You have to put yourself online for victory. Every sportsman positions himself by doing appropriate exercises in order to excel. Godliness is not cheap. The opposition is tense. It calls for lots of exercises. So the holiness adventure demands a personal responsibility. There's no one to blame. Say to the Lord, 
Lord, help me to accept total responsibility for a life that pleases you. All it really takes is you coming out to say no and knowing what to do to maintain that no. Follow after righteousness. Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord. Look unto the rock wherein ye are healed, and to the hole of the pit whence ye are digged. Look unto Abraham your father, and unto Sarah that bare you. For I called him alone, and blessed him, and increased him. Isaiah 51 verse 1 to 2. The word follow connotes the presence of certain instructions. What God wants to do in your life these last days requires that you follow after righteousness. For God to establish that restoration, you must follow after righteousness. Ye that follow. Righteousness is a thing to be followed. It's a commandment that must be followed. It's an order that you follow if you must be free from the entanglements of sin. Paul said, Not as though I have already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after. Philippians 3 verse 12. Isaiah 51 verse 7 says, Hearken unto me, ye that know righteousness. Righteousness is a thing to know, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. John 8 verse 32. So righteousness is a thing to follow after, and a thing to learn so you can know. When that is in place, everything else works. Say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with him. Isaiah 3 verse 10. That is, it shall be well with his business, his home, his children, and with everything that has to do with him. Righteousness is the master key to fulfillment. It is a thing to learn above other things because it makes every other thing to work. 1 John 3 verse 7 tells us, Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that doeth, not he that talketh, it's a thing to do. But as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. First Peter 1 verse 15. It's a thing to be, so you follow, you learn, you do, and B. B gives expression to your power of choice. If God said B, it means he has put everything in you to be, if only you choose to. Now I want you to appreciate the fact that right on the cross of Calvary, sin lost its dominion over your life. Therefore, you can make your choice when it comes to the issue of sin. If you choose to be holy because God has put in you all it takes to be holy, he will establish it in you. Make friends with God. Henceforth, I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. John 15 verse 15. Revival is the arrival of God amongst his people. Revival makes you a friend of God and an enemy of the world. Friendship with God is enmity with the world. It is revival that creates this enmity between you and the world. It enables you to say no to sin, to the spirit of this world, to the spirit of whoredom, lying spirits, covetousness, and pride. By becoming an enemy of the world, you have made yourself a friend of God. Remember Abraham he was God's friend and he was no ordinary man. At the age of 90, he was still commanding his army by himself. 
his greatness pursued him to heaven jesus said the father has not left me alone for i do always those things that please him john 8 verse 29 it is what you do that determines whether god is there or not so whatever is contrary to the will of god in your life don't nurse it fight it now chapter 4 the law of the spirit for the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death romans 8 verse 2 there is a law of the spirit and understanding and operation of that law puts the law of sin and death into captivity we have seen that there is a force that works sin bringing men into the bondage of corruption but through the spirit it can be subdued overthrown and destroyed the rod of aaron in exodus 7 verse 12 swallowed off the magician's rods even so will the spirit of god swallow up all the spirits of iniquity second thessalonians 2 verse 7 implies that provision has been made to subdue the mystery of iniquity for the mystery of iniquity doth already work only he who now let us will let until he be taken out of the way and 2 verse 8 says and then shall that wicked be revealed whom the lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming there is a mystery of iniquity there is a mystery behind the workings of iniquity there are hidden forces that manifest iniquity in men they stick and gain controls where permitted that means there's a force behind iniquity but god's spirit will consume unclean spirits those controlling spirits can be consumed and destroyed and without controversy great is the mystery of godliness god was manifest in the flesh justified in the spirit sin of angels preached unto the gentiles believed on in the world received up into glory first timothy 3 verse 16 well thank god there is a higher mystery on our side the mystery of godliness the great mystery of godliness will easily consume the mystery of iniquity the mystery of godliness seeks justification in the spirit the answer to the mystery of iniquity is the mystery of godliness many have determined many have decided but not very many have experienced liberty from the works of the flesh but i see god bringing you into your realm of liberty when the enemy shall come in like a flood it is the spirit of god that raises a standard against him when the enemy shall come in like a flood the spirit of the lord shall lift up a standard against him isaiah 59 verse 19 in chapter 6 of romans paul came out with the understanding that sin disconnects from god then in chapter 7 he came out with the understanding of the helplessness of the mortal man to deal with it and in chapter 8 he introduced us to the help of the spirit that brings you your desired victory isn't that wonderful he then went on from chapter 9 to talk about our inheritance of election at the end of it all he said the lord shall bruise satan under your feet shortly so all this while all demons have been under your authority this understanding will keep satan under your feet sin brings a curse man is helpless but the spirit is available to destroy the law of sin and death 
the law of the spirit delivers you from the negative force of the law of sin without the spirit you're helpless against the other force it is the law of one spirit that subdues the law of another spirit satan is a spirit so he operates by spirits the spirit of bondage the spirit of fear unclean spirits etc while the superior spirits will swallow up the oppression of the inferior spirits the superior law will bring the lesser law under subjection when you operate the law of the spirit you are able to walk automatically fulfilling the righteousness of the law walk after the spirit walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the loss of the flesh galatians 5 verse 16 in addition look at romans 8 verse 3 to 4 for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh god sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit the righteousness of the law is fulfillable how by walking after the spirit by engaging the law of the spirit of life in battle for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit for to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind is enmity against god for it is not subject to the law of god neither indeed can be romans 8 verse 5 to 7 it is impossible to be free from the law of sin and death without the law of the spirit it takes the law of the spirit to break the law of sin and death because they that are in the flesh cannot please god but ye are not in the flesh but in the spirit if so be that the spirit of god dwell in you now if any man have not the spirit of christ he is none of his and if christ be in you the body is dead because of sin but the spirit is life because of righteousness but if the spirit of him that raised of jesus from the dead dwell in you he that raised of christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you romans 8 verse 8 to 11 the holy spirit inside you is the way to chiefly disarm the law of sin and death therefore brethren we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh for as many as are led by the spirit of god they are the sons of god romans 8 verse 12 14 paul said even we to do groan for the redemption of our body verse 23 your greatest enemy is this body but there is help from above engage the holy spirit likewise the spirit also helpeth our infirmities for we know not what we should pray for as we ought verse 26 we can't see those controlling forces they are spirits so the holy ghost now helps our inadequacies in communicating to god on the need of the hour those motions in your mind those motions in your body that need to be dealt with we are mortally helpless but with the help of the Holy Spirit, as we begin to operate the law of the Spirit by making intercessions in the Spirit, we are able to disarm the law of sin and death. We don't know how to pray as we ought to. We know not what, but we have the help of the Spirit to locate what, disarm what, and subdue what. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Verse 27. When you pray according to the will of God, he hears you. So the Holy Spirit 
helps you to come on the frequency of the will of God so you can always secure victory. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Romans 8 verse 13. The Spirit has power to mortify the deeds of the flesh. When they are mortified, the battle is over. For instance, if you're fighting someone and he ends up in the mortuary, is the fight still on when the opposition ends up in the mortuary the battle is over this i say then walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh for the flesh lusted against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary the one to the other so that ye cannot do the things that ye would galatians 5 verse 16 to 17 to walk in the spirit means to operate in the spirit to engage the holy spirit in your earthly walk to take advantage of his ministry against the works of the flesh the spirit is contrary to the flesh so when you engage engage the holy spirit you subdue the flesh the flesh is contrary to the spirit it will disarm the spirit if you don't engage the holy spirit the bible says when a strong man armed keepeth his palace his goods are in peace but when a stronger man comes upon him he disarms him and carries his goods away luke 11 verse 21 to 22 so it takes a stronger spirit to disarm the weaker spirit but ye are of god little children and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world first john 4 verse 4 when you engage the holy spirit in keeping your spiritual goods your spiritual destiny in god your goods will be in safety the holy spirit is the force that guarantees your security in the conflicts of life therefore you must be filled with the spirit don't be empty ephesians 5 verse 18 jesus was so filled with the spirit that the flesh had no hold on him look for verse 1 to 13 mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth fornication uncleanness inordinate affection evil concupiscence and covetousness which is idolatry colossians 3 verse 5 that means the holy spirit has power to put fornication on cleanliness inordinate affection etc to death all that are listed above can be put to death by the spirit if you engage the spirit not through tears and cries no but through the spirit engage the spirit get into cloud forming prayers like elijah did in the spirit you know what paul said in ephesians 6 verse 18 praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching there unto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints so you can put these things to death whether they be habits formed over a long period of time or controls from hell you can through the spirit mortify the deeds of the flesh do you want to put iniquity far from you here is the answer to iniquity here is the answer to the sin question the manifestation the operation the engagement of the spirit of god in warfare then sin will lose its grip on you and life will lay hold on you and your life will take on a new meaning altogether i indeed baptize you with water unto repentance but he that cometh after me is mightier than i whose shoes i am not worthy to bear he shall baptize you with holy ghost and with fire whose fan is in his hand and he will 
thoroughly purge his flaw and gather his wits into the garner, but he will burn off the shaft with unquenchable fire matthew 3 verse 11 to 12 when you begin to engage the holy spirit in warfare against the flesh a wind begins to blow gathering the shaft and binding them up setting them on unquenchable fire that's a mystery the fire of the holy ghost establishes god's judgment against the forces of evil because the prince of this world is judged john 16 verse 11 the judgment of the devil is now in the hands of the holy ghost so when you engage the spirit you devastate all the forces of hell that are arrayed against your destiny the spirit of this world is judged the spirit of arrogance is judged the lying spirit is judged how by the fire of the holy ghost because he will gather the shaft and burn it with unquenchable fire he will destroy and bring judgment on them that motion of the flesh can be consumed all you need is get set to engage the spirit and you will devastate the work of the flesh this is the current thing we are just getting off the charismatic movement into the renewal movement this will bring us to the harvest time of every revelation we have ever gathered god is announcing our harvest season and bringing us to cross our last hurdle so we can enter into that realm of enviable plenty plenty of wisdom strength intelligence joy peace plenty of everything until the church of jesus christ on earth becomes the envy of the world that's where we're coming to it's a mighty mighty awakening chapter 5 praying in the holy ghost for ye beloved building up yourselves on your most holy faith praying in the holy ghost jude 20 praying in the holy ghost is praying in tongues it builds you up on your faith for holiness so your faith for a life of purity is enhanced by praying in the holy ghost i thank my god i speak with tongues more than ye all first corinthians 14 verse 18 the secrets of men are in their stories paul spoke in tongues more than they all so he enjoyed purity more than they all he so testified in first thessalonians 2 verse 10 ye are witnesses and god also how holily and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe every time you explode in tongues against the works of the flesh you are confirming the judgment of the holy spirit against the devil john 16 verse 11 praying in tongues i believe must have played a vital role in paul's christian adventure and i think that first thessalonians 2 verse 10 is one of the effects of such that's why he could say be ye followers of me as i am of christ paul is saying in effect that you don't need a bible to get to heaven just follow me he was too sure of his walk with god he was living above board he confronted sin with all forms of authority he looked at fornication and spoke strongly against it know ye not that your body is the temple of the holy ghost first corinthians 6 verse 19 he knew what he was talking about that when you engage the holy ghost on your inside the devil can't touch you with filthiness no but if ye live after the flesh ye shall die but if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body ye shall live romans 8 verse 13 you can put to death the works of those controls by engaging the spirit against every trace of such controls you notice in your life look at this when the water level is low in a 
hydroelectricity supply dam. The power supply has to be rationed because the rate of the turning of the turbines has gone down so the power supply reduces. The same way when your water level is low, the river of God inside you is low so the power it generates is low. What do you do? You pray from the depth of your heart for an infilling. Let the earth under you shake and let your life be filled to overflowing. Then you engage the spirit. You burst forth in tongues, praying in the spirit to subdue those forces and put them to death. Every time you are praying in the spirit against the motions of the flesh, anger, lust, covetousness, depression, you are commanding the judgment of the spirit against the forces that are controlling your life remotely from the spirit realm. Don't let that thing stay on. Pray. Pray in the Holy Ghost. That motion in your flesh can be consumed. That lying, that crave for adultery, drugs, beating your wife and yelling at your children can be consumed. All you need is engage the spirit. As you pray in tongues, you will devastate the works of the flesh. And he that searches the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Romans 8 verse 27. So it takes a lot of praying in the spirit to break the spirit of bondage that brings many into captivity. In hunting many times you don't see the animal. You just see the movement of the bush and you know that an animal is there. You then go ahead and shoot. You don't wait to find out what type of animal it is. Likewise, the moment you notice any negative movement in your mind or your body, just burst out brain in the spirit. For instance, you don't dream a bad dream and let it stay. The moment your eyes are open, open fire in tongues. Whatever it is, you address it in the spirit according to the will of God bringing judgment upon it and establishing your liberty for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but unto God for no man understandeth him howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2 when you pray in the Holy Ghost, your communication is outside the devil's understanding. He can't connect, so he can't attack because he doesn't know what you're talking about. What happens is that you're praying or speaking in tongues. The fire of the Holy Ghost begins to work inside your body to burn off all the shaft and purify you from every filthiness. This is one of the ways to purify yourself as 1 John 3 verse 3 says, Praying in the Holy Ghost will help you to mortify the deeds of the flesh anytime. Now celebrate your authority over those unclean spirits in tongues. Chapter 6 Cry, Abba, Father for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Romans 8 verse 15 The spirit of adoption is a forgotten treasure in the church. It is the spirit that says to God, this can't be above you. This is not greater than you. You can handle this father. That is the spirit that was at work when Jesus cried out on the cross. Eli, Eli, lama sabbatani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Matthew 27 verse 46. And the father must have responded, no, there is an agenda. I'm going to bring you out. And he did. Ephesians 1 verse 19 and 20 says, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us, word, 
who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places and philippians 2 verse 9 tells us wherefore god also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name you are coming out in jesus name whatever is not your will satan can't force you into doing it anymore because the spirit of adoption has come alive in you now i would like you to invoke the spirit of adoption for your absolute and total liberty when you invoke the spirit of adoption you are saying satan i will show you whose son i am that's it now go ahead and invoke the spirit of adoption abba father this pharaoh is not stronger than you this depression that goes and comes abba father this spirit of bondage abba father this addiction to evil abba father this control that i can't even trace abba father the spirit of bondage will always bow to the spirit of adoption anytime i want you to target that area of your life that has been a problem and begin to cry abba father there was a time the devil came against me with a heavy attack and i said satan you just watch i'm going to show you whose son i am that is the spirit of adoption that is crying abba father did you not fully pay for my total redemption abba father this is not my will why is somebody remotely controlling me abba father when the spirit of adoption so to say came upon the prodigal son he said i will go to my father that is our father meaning rescue me from this dying state let's get back to this forgotten treasure deliverance will always answer whenever we cry abba father chapter 7 you've got the key the flood stage of this revival we are in is coming that's why god is putting the controls in our hands so we can last in it i was reading the gratis article flood stage in the april 97 edition of charisma and he said how do you prepare for a flood before the water hits the roof line the best strategy in this case is to toss everything that might cause you to sink that means it's time for fasting and repentance friends there's a place for you in this move you must find it not everyone survives the revival but you must decide to survive whatever will make you sink it's time to toss it now this is it every time you sense a negative motion in your mind or body just open fire as a wife for instance when you sense something rising inside you against your husband get into the toilet and open fire burst forth in tongues kill it and flush it down the drain you come out and all the negative motions are dead if jesus has said we shall cast out devils in his name how can devils stick to us we are witnessing the early stages of a huge revival the thing is going to get bigger and bigger until it floods the entire earth it's happening in pockets of places around the world right now don't be lost in the crowd so take a personal decision to establish your personal purification so that your positioning by god can be enhanced i see a bright new day bursting forth for you satan is now exposed the spirit that works in the children of disobedience is exposed every time you notice a negative influence turn back like elisha and curse it in the name of jesus say lose your hold on me i have overcome you i have power against you i cast you off in the name of jesus 
Don't stay quiet. Open your mouth and slap the devil and you will find freedom on the spot. You've got the key. Finally, the Bible says, Say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with him, for they shall eat of the fruits of their doings. Isaiah 3 verse 10. Now, I curse every spell on your business. I curse every intention of the wicked against your job. You spirits of adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, covetousness, lasciviousness, sedition, pride, get out in the name of Jesus and enter no more forever. You spirits of spiritual weariness that seems to make God's word of no effect and take God's grace for granted, I cast you out in the name of Jesus. Spirit of anger, bitterness, hatred, malice, come out now in the name of Jesus. Lying spirits, I bind you and cast you out. Spirit of the world that controls the lost of the flesh, lost of the eyes, and pride of life, I cast you out in the name of Jesus. Prince of the powers of the air that influences men into negative actions and negative thoughts, I cast you out in the name of Jesus. Spirit of whoredom, I cast you out in the name of Jesus. Friends, you are covered now by the blood of the Lamb. Every satanic influence that is destroyed this day in your life will never reoccur in the name of Jesus. From this hour, I declare you free from all demonic influences. You shall no more see corruption in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Hallelujah. You are free.